and interestingly it causes uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an example of a tumorogenic uh, uh, viral infection this particular virus can cause uh, can produce some tumor uh, most of the tumors are benign in nature usually it doesn't uh, produce uh, some malignancy and doesn't kill the uh, host however there are certain members under certain circumstances they may uh, transform this infected tissue into a uh, malignant uh, malignancy and that leads to tumor formation and death may occur and uh, probably most of you will be knowing this become a uh, routine vaccinations for the girls uh, for uh, human papilloma virus infection and nowadays uh, uh, it is very common and if you have not taken please you should take that particular vaccines because it can cause us sometimes uh, um, the uterine tumors and that may lead to some cancerous uh, condition so this is very common and that's the human papilloma virus infection so what uh, basically we'll do is uh, we'll discuss about uh, in general about this papilloma viruses how they cause this disease and uh, the diagnosis aspect and certain uh, characteristics of this uh, virus the papilloma virus as you know this is uh, these are very common and many of you probably have seen it uh, but uh, Mm, you may not be uh, understanding that these are caused by certain viruses, minute uh, virus particles, they call, cause this kind of cellular transformation and outgrowth, which look like some uh, small uh, papillae, like finger leg projection, small uh, tissue projections from the skin and the mucous epithelium. Probably you have seen many of us, we, uh, uh, we develop these kind of things in our neck regions and even in these uh, uh, brachial uh, regions, we can uh, develop uh, certain uh, pedunculated growth, small finger-like projections. Because of that typical uh, clinical manifestation caused by this group of viruses, they have been named as papilloma viridae. Earlier, uh, there was uh, two bifurcations, papilloma and polyoma. Uh, and the word oma, O-M-A, oma means tumor. So, Papil means the small pedunculated growth, OMA means tumorogenic viruses. So as such, they are termed as papilloma viridae. So there are many examples where uh, they produce some benign infections, but uh, under uh, influence of certain chemicals, these benigns may uh, undergo malignancy. And um, so and thereby it is, uh, of course, um, some sort of serious uh, conditions that it may develop. However, most of the papilloma virus, they are uh, benign and self-limiting type of infection. And uh, uh, the immune systems can uh, eliminate this uh, virus from uh, causing this kind of uh, outgrowth in the skins and the mucous membrane, right? So among this uh, domestic animal, uh, a lot of papilloma virus infection has been seen and uh, interestingly there is a very very long list of uh, the papilloma viruses so genus um, sometimes we feel it's uncountable such an amount number of genus are there and uh, the organisms so um, what we understand is that the papilloma uh, variety family includes so many members and almost all of them they produce a similar kind of infection however certain infections like uh, human papillomavirus uh, uh, certain specific uh, members they causes these tumorogenic uh, conditions like um, the uh, canine papillomavirus 6 it can causes the uh, soft palate and hard palate papilloma, some are cutaneous, canine papilloma virus, one causes uh, cutaneous. But uh, if you see the number, you will find numerous papilloma viruses. As you see, uh, the, the papilloma variety has been grouped into two subfamily, uh, uh, the first papilloma virini and second papilloma virini. These are again a very recent classification, 2019. Uh, this word has come first and the second. Earlier it was alpha and uh, beta, and alpha, beta, gamma, delta, whatever word appear, you'll find the papilloma viruses there. So, for your curiosity, you can go through the ICTV website and search it and see that uh, many, many papilloma viruses are there. And um, this uh, first papilloma virini, they contain 52 genera. And uh, 
there the alpha papillomavirus uh, uh, are mainly causing uh, infection in bovine, canine, see human. Uh, but uh, it is difficult to generalize and restrict to only one uh, genus. So uh, the viruses are distributed in many genera and uh, almost all of them, they produce a similar kind of clinical manifestations. So genetically, they are different, okay? So uh, the second papilloma virini identified include only one genus, that's a specific infection, but not related to uh, our disease condition. So these papilloma viruses, they are uh, very small, they're small, uh, uh, these uh, DNA viruses, and uh, uh, they have the icosahedral uh, symmetry. And uh, these are some of the electron microscopic pictures showing this uh, uh, papilloma viruses having the T7 uh, range span, the capsule. So um, uh, around 72 capsomere uh, um, can be seen in its face. So uh, these are some of the general characteristics of this papilloma variety. So uh, we'll try to get more information from this particular base. So first thing, the uh, non-envelope icosahedral symmetry. It's quite interesting. This particular virus could not be successfully propagated in the cell culture. So we learn about so many viruses, almost all viruses we mentioned about the uh, isolations and propagation, but this papilloma viruses, uh, there are very little success. And that too also not in uh, cell culture system, in certain tissue implants, uh, the human papilloma virus, people uh, able to reproduce and grow it uh, uh, in vitro. But uh, in the laboratory conditions, in the cell culture, till now successfully, the papilloma viruses could not be grown. It's because of its nature. And in fact, these uh, viruses, they uh, can integrate it with the host cell chromosome episomally, okay? Not the direct integration, unlike the retroviruses. Similar to that of herpes viruses, this uh, group of uh, viruses can also uh, integrate with the uh, host cell uh, genome, and uh, that may lead to uh, persistent infections. In long time, the virus can persist, and so long the virus particle will be there in the infected cells, we can see the clinical lesions, okay? Once the immune systems will be able to uh, remove all these infectious organisms, then obviously those lesions will be subsided. And it is basically restricting. It's not a generalized infection. You never get the virus in the blood circulations. It always restricted to the particular site where they produce the papillomas, okay? So uh, some more information that you can record is, this is a uh, DNA, double strand DNA virus having super coiled and circular. This is the characteristics of bacterial chromosome. So here also they are uh, super coiled and uh, both the ends are um, covalently linked, super coiled circular genome. Sometimes it's called as the uh, CC, CCD uh, DNA, close um, circular super coiled uh, DNA. So uh, they, they, they are having around six to eight uh, kilo bases and codes for um, around eight to 10 different proteins. And the viruses, if you see the characteristics, then you'll find they're quite stable in the environment and uh, withstand heating uh, up to a moderately uh, high temperature. And uh, the, the cell associated virus are highly infectious, that means, uh, this papillomatous growth when uh, the infected uh, superficial cells they uh, get dislodged so along with those uh, dead cell the viruses uh, comes outside and uh, they may infect another and the mode of transmission is mainly skin abrasion okay it's not by the other route it's mainly the skin abrasion this uh, virus transmissions may occur through certain um, uh, skin injury, the virus may uh, enter and can establish the infection, okay? So um, they're quite stable virus. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, this virus, they induce transformation. This is the more most important point, please underline it. This is an example of tumorogenic DNA virus, along with the herpes viruses, few members of herpes virus, the papilloma are also example of DNA virus, which can produce tumor, right? 
And interestingly, this uh, tumor formation is not uh, because of uh, genomic integration, it's because of epigenomal nature uh, of the virus genome. And they produce certain oncoproteins. It's not that uh, unlike the v on genes that uh, we discuss among the retroviruses as well as in the Morick disease. So these viruses, they do not have any oncogenes, but some of the viral protein, some of the viral protein, uh, they, uh, um, they can cause interference in uh, cell uh, cycle, uh, growth cycle, and that leads to um, more proliferation of cells than as needed, and that leads to the formation of uh, tumors. So this they can cause cellular transformation please note it down this is important <clears throat> yeah, uh, coming to uh, some more characteristics of this uh, we find uh, the, the the main uh, pathology lies with the hyperplasia of cells of the stratum spinosum with subsequent hyperkeratinizations hyperkeratinization and um, overgrowth of uh, the cells in the stratum spinosum. So uh, when the viruses, they enter through skin injury, as I said, uh, they, they can initiate their in infections, only the favorable uh, uh, transcriptions environment can be provided by this stratum spinosum cells, please note it down. And uh, the, the infected cells, the overgrowth takes place. So why this overgrowth takes place, uh, uh, we'll come to that point. So when these uh, uh, cells overgrowth takes place, gradually they will come up uh, through the mucosal or the skin surface epithelium and a visible papillomas uh, uh, can be detected. So cauliflower, sometimes these papillomas are mixed up uh, in such a way that this look like uh, cauliflower growth. So, uh, sometimes the rice grain papilloma, sometimes smooth, flat papilloma. So different types of papilloma, uh, papillomatous growth uh, has been detected in this group of virus infection, right? Uh, this are uh, some pictures. So this is very common in the dog, canine papilloma and the oral mucus commissures or in the gums, we can see this kind of white uh, pedunculated growth. Sometimes it gives rise to a cauliflower just like this. In severe cases, so we'll share some more slides here. This is in the um, soft pellets and uh, in the equine papillomavirus, this kind of papillomatous growth we can see. Same in case of the human also, we can have cutaneous papilloma as well as in the um, uh, reproductive glands like in the uh, vagina as well as in the uterus, this kind of uh, papillomatous growth may produce. So in bovine papilloma virus, uh, which are very predominantly we can see in the teeth as well as in the skin surface. So certain very severe forms of bovine papilloma infections uh, uh, can even uh, um, cause uh, severe economic losses. So this is a very common picture in canine, this kind of papillomatous growth is very frequently seen. So both mucus as well as in the cutaneous uh, reasons, we can see this kind of, sometimes we call this a water-like growth, but uh, basically they are caused by the papilloma viruses, okay? So this outgrowth is the outcome of stratum, stratum spinosum cells uh, outgrowth, okay? Not the epithelial cells. So uh, once their replications will take place, I think, uh, yeah, here I'm just putting uh, uh, the, the different papilloma viruses, as I say, there are so many numbers are there. So if you're interested, you can pick up any one like CPV1 and can study that particular virus. Uh, so this is on the example. Are these pictures, uh, have you seen this picture? Is it visible? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, this is a picture which uh, uh, I just cropped it from Fener Veterinary Virology. This, uh, you can get the idea how it actually occurred. These are the stratum spinosum cells and how the virus will reach this particular place. It is through skin injury. If there is any bruises in the skin, the, the virus from the environment can enter. And how the virus will remain in the environment? From the sedate tissues. So free virus doesn't remain in the environment. Mostly the 
uh, the, the, the sated tissues, just like this, these are the sated tissues uh, from the speculometer's growth. And they contain large amount of virus and through skin injury, they may penetrate and they target the spectrum spinous and cells. So once they will grow it here, some of the viral protein has seven important proteins, which has been designated as E1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, likewise seven different proteins were identified, out of which uh, some proteins like E5 proteins uh, and uh, E7 proteins, uh, they had certain uh, direct effect on cell cycle uh, growth control mechanism. So one of them like uh, E7 protein is a tumor suppressor protein. They can inactivate the P53 protein, which is a cell cycle control proteins. As a result, the cells will undergo uncontrolled proliferations like this way. And these cells will divide. These cells will divide to the next, next, next like that way. And finally, the entire population of this particular cells, they will even come out of the surface, skin surface, and it's appear as an pedunculated growth. This is what we call as the papilloma infection. Okay, so uh, this uh, the uh, origins from this particular infected cell. Likewise, if many cells are infected in this vicinity, then gradually this papilloma size will be bigger in nature. So like that way, once they come out of this uh, cell surface, then the keratinizations occur at the skin surface. And uh, sedate uh, epithelial cells become a source of infections for other animals. So as I said about the E proteins, so um, the E proteins are also designated as oncoproteins. Why oncoprotein? Because they had the potential to cause uncontrolled proliferation of cells. Now, how they can cause the uncontrolled proliferation in the very simple language you can understand, they prevent, uh, um, they prevent the infected cells from leaving the cell cycle, okay? So cells will continuously divide. So similarly, uh, the E7 protein, uh, this particular E7 proteins uh, have direct effect. They degrade the retinoblastoma protein. RB protein is a, the signal transducer proteins and that leads to uh, dysregulations of uh, cell cycle. It's an inhibitor of the cell cycle uh, process. As a result, the cells will continuously grow and divide. So similarly, the E6 oncoproteins uh, in case of human papilloma virus, they directly interfere with the P53. It is a tumor suppressor protein. As a result, this E6 protein can cause continuous uh, outgrowth and that leads to development of uh, tumor right so uh, thereby uh, some of them uh, they, they they are known to be the carcinogenic or the, uh, what we can say cancerous type of uh, growth they may produce however majority of them they are benign in nature self-restricting and uh, doesn't uh, spread it to the other area restricted to certain uh, regions only but however certain members are potentially dangerous and can cause uh, carcinoma okay so uh, these are some of the pathology how this uh, uh, occur but very interestingly what it has been observed is that it is extremely difficult to grow this virus if you just uh, uh, you can purify the virus from this kind of lesions by ultra centrifugation, you can purify, you can take electron microscopic photos, everything. But when you try to infect into those monolayer cells, then you will find there is no replication of virus in the monolayer cells. So that's the biggest hurdle of developing some suitable vaccines uh, against the papilloma viruses. Uh, and uh, uh, certain trials where the tissue graft from the uh, immunosuppressed animal. Uh, uh, in certain laboratory, they are able to produce uh, and grow the virus in the condition, but not in the conventional cell culture methods. Okay, one of the very common way to detect and locate the virus in this papillomatous growth is by uh, immunoperoxidase staining. As you can see here, this is in some infected cells, and 
these are the cells where the virus presence could be detected. They are appearing as a red, intense red color in the immunoperoxidase staining. So as you know, the immunoperoxidase is similar to that of the ELISA. So the tissues where the virus is located will produce uh, this kind of uh, things. And uh, we can, uh, that is a helpful in diagnosis process, right? So what we learn about it is that this particular group of virus, their transmissions, uh, they occur laterally, horizontal transmissions, they occur. The virus is mainly cell associated and the uh, entry of the virus uh, uh, cause is occurred through skin aberration and skin injury. And uh, they, most of them, they are uh, restricting to a certain uh, area, not spreading to the other part. And in that area, they cause some papillomatous growth. Okay, that's the outgrowth of stratospinous uh, cells, and uh, which are which leads which gives us to uh, some visible papilloma uh, growth on the skin surface. That's about the papilloma virus infection. So in the diagnosis. Uh, um, like uh, the clinically, it is very distinct. And looking at these gross lesions, uh, we can immediately think about the papillomavirus infection. Okay? Uh, the reason limitations that we cannot go for isolation and identification. So certain other methods like immunoperoxidase, as the previous slide I have shown you, and certain tests like RIA and ELISA are uh, available for detections of antibody. However, antibody detection doesn't give us much information in this kind of diseases. Uh, so better we can go for PCR-based detections from these lesions. Uh, we can detect the uh, papilloma virus genome from the infected host cell by DNA extractions. So electron microscopy is another. If the facility avails, then we can um, go for that. So. Uh, since we don't have any vaccines, the reason so is that uh, there are so many numbers are there and the antigenic differences are there. No a single virus or a group of virus can give some protection uh, against this kind of uh, lesions. However, in case of the canine, uh, the virus is circulating in an area. Uh, people will try to prepare some inactivated vaccines. Uh, to some extent, they can reduce uh, the incidence. However, uh, they cannot uh, give full protections against this uh, disease, okay? And uh, many animal species, they may uh, harbor this uh, virus and the cross uh, infections, uh, there is record of cross infection from one species to the other. So in uh, uh, veterinary practice, if they are very distinct, then we suggest for surgical removal to some extent. And some uh, drugs, uh, we apply it, even antiviral drugs, uh, to reduce this kind of uh, papillomatous growth in the skin surface. However, uh, cannot be applied in all cases. If it is a very severe form, then um, we have to wait till it regresses. As you know, the immune systems, when the antibodies will be generated, they will minimize the lesions and uh, the, the intensity of the lesions will uh, gradually decrease. And even some animals, they will fully recover after two to three weeks, particularly canine papilloma. There are certain practices, but these are some placebo uh, techniques. It's not recommended uh, in a regular textbook where people go for autoimmune therapy they simply collect the uh, blood and inject the blood intramuscularly. This is called an autoimmune therapy, where people get some success, but uh, these are not uh, regular therapy suggested for this kind of uh, things. Even certain homeopathic medicines are also suggested, which can substantially reduce uh, the, uh, the amount of this papilloma growth here. This is a very extremely severe form, you can see in the bovine papilloma infections. Uh, these are very common. Sometimes what happens, this kind of uh, growths are, if it is numerous, then the animal unable to uh, eat food and starvation occur. Uh, but uh, these lesions are uh, self-limiting, restricting to uh, one, two or three weeks and gradually they regress. Okay? And that again depends on the immune status of the animal. Uh, if suppose the animal is immunosuppressive, then uh, these lesions may persist for quite a long uh, period, okay? 
So these are about this papilloma infections uh, in animal. As I said that there are so many uh, members and uh, almost all of them, they produces the same kind of lesions. Even in the bovine papilloma virus, uh, one particular type also can cause this kind of papillomatous growth in the urinary blood. And uh, certain studies reveal that uh, the animals, uh, when they are fed with the broken farm, uh, then uh, some uh, uh, mycocutaneous uh, uh, cancers were detected in the bovine. Fatal, uh, fatalities were observed in, uh, in certain studies. So uh, we cannot say that these are uh, totally safe or unharmful, but uh, under certain circumstances, um, under the influence of certain medicines or immunosuppressive conditions may lead to uh, malignancy. So um, that's about this, uh, the papillomavirus infection. So uh, this information, so I feel, will give you a uh, baseline uh, guidance for further discussing about the disease or if you have to study you can uh, explore it okay so that's about it now uh, again uh, somebody mentioned about this HEPA DNA variety of course this is not included in your syllabi but still as you have suggested uh, I will mention about this particular uh, DNA virus family. This is quite again interesting this HEPA DNA variety this is another DNA virus which harbor these RT enzymes, see, reverse transcriptase enzymes. So as you know, the reverse transcriptase enzymes, the characteristics of the retrovirality, that's why they call us the retroviruses or they possess the reverse transcriptase. But this particular DNA virus, HIPAA DNA virus, also possess this reverse transcriptase enzyme. They have the genetic information to code this RT enzyme. And uh, having a very, very peculiar uh, uh, replication strategy by this HEPA DNA variety. So they are hepatotropic virus and most of the time this member on the HEPA DNA, they cause some persistent infection. And one such disease, I think every one of you will understand the very, very fatal uh, human liver cirrhosis caused by hepatitis B virus. It is an HEPA DNA variety uh, member. Hepatitis B. As you know, the human hepatitis are distributed in different families, like hepatitis C is an RNA virus, hepatitis B is a DNA virus. This is under the hepatina variety. So hepatitis B is a potentially fatal disease in human that causes the liver cirrhosis and uh, the, the, the death rate is very high in the uh, hepatitis B virus infection. So um, in, in, in our uh, field, uh, uh, the HEPA DNA variety include uh, the dark hepatitis B virus infection um, and has been recorded from many countries, even in our uh, India also, we have recorded the, the hepatitis, uh, dark hepatitis B virus infection. So some more information that uh, we can discuss it. Uh, uh, they are envelope viruses, but uh, interestingly, even the non envelope forms are also seen. Uh, and icosahedral symmetry is that uh, nucleocapsid symmetry and uh, 40 to 60 nanometer in size. And within their envelope, they possess this uh, uh, sorry, indeed, the nucleocapsids they possess this RT enzyme. Okay, so the genome is again partially double stranded DNA. You can note it down this point so if somebody asks you about this example of partially double-stranded DNA. It's a DNA virus, but the one part of the DNA is single-stranded. So partially double-stranded DNA, uh, around uh, three uh, kb size. And the, 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 the replication strategy, uh, this is a very interesting phenomenon that occur. Uh, the pre-genomic RNA are forms and they convert it into DNA within the nuclear by the RT enzyme. Let us see this particular picture to understand this uh, uh, phenomenon. So the virus through specific receptors can enter and uh, the, the, the polymerase enzymes, uh, they remain attached with the uh, nucleic acids and uh, it's a, they replicate inside the nucleus. So after oxidation, the, um, the, the, the DNA, they, they uh, the, 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 the linear DNA, they, um, sorry, the, the, the DNA, they will 
convert to CCC DNA, uh, close uh, circular supercoiled DNA. And uh, thereafter, utilizing this uh, host cell uh, polymerase enzymes and uh, the different uh, transcriptase enzymes, the different messenger RNAs are produced for synthesis of the protein. So once such uh, uh, RNA, the whole genome length RNA, it is called as PZRNA, this particular molecule. Can you see? This is the PZRNA, uh, pro genomic RNA, uh, that copy all the information of the genomic DNA and they enter inside the nuclear capsis. And inside the nuclear capsis, the RT enzyme will convert this PZRNA to a double stranded DNA. And finally, they will be released through the endoplasmic reticulum as an envelope bias to the outside. So this is an important phenomenon that occur in this group of uh, viruses. So they are uh, partly uh, single-stranded and uh, partly double-stranded uh, DNA virus, okay? So uh, two genus, uh, ortho -HIPA DNA and av -HIPA DNA. Of course, this would be italics, uh, forgot to make it. So the hepatitis B virus infection of human. The first member under this HEPA DNA was identified in Australia, and it is from the Utsak hepatitis virus. And uh, that was uh, sometimes this is also called as the Australian antigen. This is more related to hepatitis B virus uh, infection. So probably you have heard it uh, frequently. This word is used, Australian antigen, something like that, as uh, because it was first identified in Australia in the Utsak hepatitis virus and uh, it is a close relative of hepatitis B virus infection in human, okay? Uh, however, uh, the virus of our importance is the duck hepatitis B virus. It's an AB HEPA DNA, DNA virus, okay? So the name of this family, HEPA DNA, means uh, it causes hepatitis and the virus mainly uh, under persistence in the hepatocytes, okay? So presence of this viral DNA inside these hepatocytes uh, may lead to uh, overgrowth and uh, proliferation of fibroblastic cells and the kopfer cells in the hepatic sinusoids that lead to the condition of what we call as the cirrhosis or fibrosis. And uh, this particular duck hepatitis B virus infections, uh, this is again the age related clinical manifestations are seen, has been recorded in many countries. And uh, it says in one study in the US, it says that 10% of the domestic ducks are naturally infected. So this virus naturally present uh, in the uh, in the population, almost ten percent. Uh, of course, the the virus are excreted through fecal excretions and lateral transmissions uh, <coughs> may also occur. But majority of the cases, the infection is uh, because of vertical transmission through egg. The transmissions occur to the chicks, newly had chicks. And they develop the immunity against the virus. So the virus uh, for a quite long period unable to produce the lesions. And uh, once uh, the immunity goes down, then uh, they, they can grow and uh, multiply in the hepatocytes. And that leads to uh, clinical manifestation of the disease. So in the young chicks, usually persistent infections uh, are observed without much uh, producing the lesions. However, uh, certain conditions like secondary uh, viral um, immunosuppressive viral infections like IBD or maybe aflatoxicosis conditions uh, may aggravate the conditions and even the young stays also um, some sort of uh, hepatic changes uh, could be seen. So in adult birth, uh, generally they exhibit the incoordination and stop movement and green or water excreta and gradually the mortality increases. And at the postmortem, what we can see is that echimotic hemorrhage in the liver. This is a spot uh, echimotic hemorrhage and edematous uh, changes we could see surrounding. And uh, in the chronic cases, again, the cirrhosis occur. This is a common characteristic of this group of viruses. The hepatitis B virus also causes the cirrhosis. So there, what you can see is the proliferation of copper cells in peri uh, periportal fibrosis that uh, causes the cirrhosis condition. Okay, that's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a um, it never revert back. So once the cirrhosis occurs, it is a terminal stage and the bird will die. Okay, so uh, the diagnosis is based on the conventional like PCR, LISA, and histopathology. However, there is a um, uh, point like uh, the antibody based detection. 
uh, doesn't keep much relevance in the diagnosis of this hepatitis, uh, dark hepatitis B virus infection as like uh, the persistent infections are seen in the population. So that cannot be correlated with the clinical disease, okay? So duck hepatocytes uh, culture <coughs> are available for propagation of the virus as well as in the uh, duck embryo cultures. By route, we can propagate the virus where uh, some greenish discoloration of the embryos are seen in those uh, infections and uh, those are diagnostically important. And further, we can confirm by PCFS uh, test, okay? So vaccines were tried, but they're not uh, considered to be fully protective. As uh, in our country, we don't have any vaccines, commercial vaccines in the market. So uh, these are some informations that uh, I shared uh, with you for this particular infection. Okay, and this is about the HIPAA DNA virality family. Please note it down. This is another DNA virus having the RT enzyme, right? So thank you very much. If you have any specific questions and query, then we can discuss. Uh, as I said that uh, Tapan Sar will be taking some course on mycology. Mm, I don't know the timing. You please contact him and uh, fix the timing for that. Uh, from my side again, uh, as you have requested, uh, the serological test and some sort of the review of immunology, as you have studied, uh, said, that uh, I'll be covering in uh, two or three classes and beforehand I will inform you. Uh, otherwise, if I do not give any information, uh, then definitely I will not take the regular classes, okay? And uh, if you request uh, more, then yeah, we can have more sessions and uh, uh, we can discuss about it, right? Lima Pui. Hello. Yeah, anybody want to ask any questions or uh, people start lifting the meeting? I don't know. Yes, Yeju Rai, what I could see in your name here, I'm just calling you. Yes, sir. Yeah, any, any, any. Hmm. Oh, okay, background image uh, sound is really high. Okay, fine. Uh, if you have any specific queries or anything or any requests, please let me know so that uh, we can continue, right? So otherwise, um, as per the regular classes, uh, I consider this is uh, the complete course that uh, we have discussed it. The additional thing, uh, I will arrange the classes and beforehand I will uh, let you know, okay? Yeah. Thank Please you, sir. Okay then, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes. Anything about the exam? Oh, till now, too, we don't have any information. As part of the academic calendar, it should already it should start it from 14th of this month itself. But uh, since we that decision, I think some of the sir can only tell you. Uh, we have not been told anything about this examination for your pets. However, for first year student, they will have the uh, second assessment. I think by next uh, week. Now, don't worry, everything will be very fine if you study it uh, all the course. There's no point of any worry. We can have some question session also um, if you request, and uh, we can discuss it. And some random questions, what type of things uh, uh, generally ask in the examination. So we'll have some session on that aspect also. Okay. Yeah. Sir. Yes. So, like, will your slides be enough or we have to read, like, the whole book? See, my dear, I always suggest to read the textbook. Textbooks are written by some renowned persons and scientists. They are globally renowned scientists. They write the textbook. So, textbook is the ultimate. Uh, the slides are simply a guidelines that uh, uh, we just uh, give you a narrow briefing and try to make you understand about the... Uh, it's a concise thing, no? so I never suggest that you read only the slides. Even the slides are not at all needed. Still, on request, I'm sharing the slides. But uh, please read the book. There is no point that uh, you don't have time to read the book. You had the book with you. I guess you are having the book. 
Yes, sir. Uh, please try to consult the book and read the book. Some uh, uh, things like the classification, as I say, uh, today itself, the first papilloma, second papilloma, none of this book, you will get this first papilloma, second papilloma. Likewise, the update you can uh, prepare and always try to make your own uh, set of uh, questionnaires and some sort uh, uh, um, compile thing. So that uh, very regular, uh, very frequently you can go through it so that you can remember it. Otherwise, most of this terminology and things are uh, not uh, a single time remembering uh, words. So we have to repeat it many times then. and try to study some small, small topic. Even the Mark Veterinary Manuals I suggested earlier, you can just search it and read the chapter from there. We'll, uh, get additional like what kind of treatments, uh, what are the antiviral drugs that is it for papilloma infections. So we'll get more information, okay? And getting those information, you should feel happy. That's all. Okay, still I will share my slide. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other? Okay, if no more questions, then I'll uh, close the session for today. Thank you very much for attending the class.